It is a difficult history, that of the black southern farmer, and when times are trying for all American farmers, they are even more trying for black farmers. The difficulty for me is that there's not the same technical support, monetary support that you might see with white farmers. Jermaine Jenkins operates an urban farm in North Charleston, South Carolina. There was like 14% black farmers many years ago. Now there's like one or 2%. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, black farmers own just a half a percent of America's farmland, while 95 percent of American farmers are white. We know what the history of the Department of Agriculture has been when it comes to farmers and the differentials uh, that are made when it comes to black farmers. House Majority Whip James Clyburn represents South Carolina in Congress. He is concerned about subsidies given to offset tariffs imposed by the Trump administration. The number that I've seen uh, is that 99.4 percent uh, is what it what's going to white farmers as opposed to black farmers. The state of South Carolina says that they are aware of this disparity. That's something the General Assembly has asked us to look at, and that's something that we're you know definitely um, working on. The history of this inequality cannot be ignored. Today, black farmers in the South tend to land which many of their ancestors were forced to farm as slaves. We don't plant no cotton on John's Island no more, uh, no tobacco on John's Island no more, but we still plant all fresh local produce. Joseph yeah. Fields when farms land on John's farm. Island, South Carolina, that his grandparents farmed and ultimately purchased in the 1800s. Yeah. I love it. Uh, my grandparents, they were farmers. They were farmers on the farm. And they had, to go, they had to take boats to get to Charleston. At that time, they didn't have no bridges. So tell me the story of this land. How did your grandparents get the money to afford this? At that time, she was breastfeeding the other people's kids across the street, you know, get, selling the breast milk to them in order to gain money. And she used that money to and, buy this and she, land? She used that money to buy the land. An amazing story. Uh, yes, back then, back in the 1800s, you got to do uh, what you have to do, and that's what she did. Farming has never been simple for black Southerners, and one man who grew up on a farm in Alabama is scared. It is so difficult for farmers to survive. Small farmers, medium-sized farms, to survive. And I, I don't quite understand how people are making it. Like John Lewis, Joseph Fields loved farming from an early age. I had to go to the market downtown, to the market street, early in the morning with, with my daddy as a little fellow. Today he's still planting beans and planting corn and watching things grow, but he has changed with the times. And that was organic for the last 10 years. Similarly, with her urban farm, Jermaine Jenkins knows that she too has to keep up. No matter who you are, like your crops can fail, so you need to have another way to bring in resources. For Jenkins, that means encouraging future farmers. So we, we teach, we're going to have events here, um, we uh, want to uh, do something with value-added products. But keeping up traditions, even those born out of ugliness, is important for these farmers. It's this rich history of, you know, of, of West African peoples that were were on like secluded islands, so they kept their culture from, from enslaved times till today. The Gullah were West Africans who were settled mostly on outer islands in the south to work the plantations. Gullah is, is the way things is here. We do our part to kind of make those connections between the Gullah community, like these foods that we enjoy, like okra in the summertime. And perhaps it's the idea of preserving that heritage that makes these farmers so resilient. As a black farmer, I, I hope my kids and my grandkids take up what I got here going on the farm. It's hard work, but something you need to love to do. Michael Shore, I-24 News, Johns Island, South Carolina.